On Doggy Dilemmas this week, it's all about agility. Not heard of it? Stay tuned and you'll find out. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. This week on Doggy Dilemma, we're visiting the Monadnock Humane Society's Training Center and we're going to learn about the sport of agility. Now agility is fun for all dogs and all people and it's great fun and exercise. So whether you have a small dog, big dog, and regardless of breed, anybody can do agility. So let's go inside and meet Rachel Brostrom, the manager of the Training Center, and play some agility. Rachel. Hi, good Denise. Good to see you again. Good to see you. And who's this? This is Kobe. Oh, hi, Kobe. I know. <laughs> so I'm very excited to do this show today. Good. I'm excited to have you here. And um, we are going to talk about agility. Yes. So first, tell us what you do at the Manana Humane Society and tell us about agility. Okay. Um, I am the Manana Humane Society Training Center Manager. Sit. Mm -hmm. Good boy. And I teach classes here. I also work in the office area. Um, I have been a trainer here for over six years. Oh, and I teach a variety of training classes, including agility, uh, rally, competition obedience, and then we have a large basic training class program. Mm -hmm. OK? Great, great. Right. So what is agility? OK. Just, Just give us, you know, give us a, the basics. OK. Agility is a great um, training activity that's a physical and mental outlet for many dogs. Mm -hmm. Uh, it teaches the dogs to perform a variety of obstacles like jumps, going through tunnels, climbing up um, some large um, wooden obstacles mm -hmm. up on a table and through the weave poles, which is like a slalom exercise oh, where the dogs go through weave poles. Great. Yeah. And can anybody do it? Can any dog do it? Or? Sure. Um, mostly any dog can do it. Physically, they have to be... Um, uh, comfortable and not overweight and sound enough to be mm -hmm. jumping and bending and twisting and running. Um, dogs that are um, comfortable being around other dogs is mm -hmm. also an important mm -hmm. um, skill for them so that they're not aggressive towards other dogs or mm -hmm. people. Right, right. So it doesn't matter. Short dog, chihuahuas, right. <laughs> chihuahuas can Small do Small dogs, large dogs. Um, Dogs, Saint Bernards. I mean, um, some there are some Saint Bernards. Mm -hmm. um, large dogs certainly, it's a more difficult exercise to teach okay. them to do. Okay. Because they have to do much more bending, and their bodies are so much larger. Right. Uh, right. Even dogs um, that are older, as long as they're comfortable, they're able to do learn how to do agility. Okay. Great. Okay. So no breed specifics. Tell us a little bit. Now I know just enough about agility to probably get in trouble. So there's <laughs> different um, venues. Yes. So without like. Like, you know, overwhelming me with too many details, okay. but like, what would the beginner or what would I need to know about the different venues if I were, and do I need to know that before I do agility? I don't think that you really need to know that necessarily before you start teaching your dog to do agility, okay. because the basic training of agility is pretty much exactly the same, regardless of how you want to progress in agility, whether it's towards competition at a high level, mm -hmm. or whether it is someone in our local area who would be going to trials um, occasionally on the weekends. Mm -hmm. okay. So pretty much you're teaching the dogs to go over the jumps, through the tunnels, up on the table, and over the contact obstacles. Um, basically the same way until you maybe start looking towards competition mm -hmm. and then you would want to differentiate between the venues of agility. Okay. There are certainly some obstacles that are slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, but From the venue to venue? Yes, okay. but, but not a great enough difference to really vary your training at the beginning levels. Okay, okay, great. So this is a beautiful training center that you guys Thank have you. here at Thank the Manana Community Society. So tell me, um, I'm new to the area, I, I'm going to watch the show, I want to do agility, so 
what are the first steps? So the first steps of teaching um, a new team to do agility mm -hmm. would be to get in a basic training class. A group training class is a great place to start. Okay. Um, it gets the dogs learning to pay attention to their owners while um, there are other dogs and people around. Okay. Uh, it also gets the dog and owner um, getting accustomed to actually teaching the dog new skills. Mm -hmm. So agility is pretty much all brand new skills that the owners are going to be teaching right. their dogs using positive reinforcement and reward based training. So to get in a group training class that utilizes those methods is a great place to start. Okay. And so what would that be here? So okay. So here we set a prerequisite for most dogs as being our level one class mm -hmm. and that is everyday canine essentials. Okay. Certainly there are dogs that would benefit from taking a level two training class. Mm -hmm. We call that focused Fido here. Okay. Um, because those dogs maybe just need a little more group training before mm -hmm. they would be ready for the environment that our pre-agility classes right. offer. And I can imagine that, that it's somewhat distracting yes. to be in a, I mean, so, this is a big room, yes, so but yeah. you get, I don't know, five, six, eight dogs yeah. in here. Yeah. and So our pre-agility class, there's a lot of visual stimulation for the dogs. They come in here and there's all of this equipment that's out here. And so that mm -hmm. can be distracting for the dog. Right. There's also the, the pace at which the dogs are working in class mm -hmm. tends to be a little higher paced so that the dogs that are, um, Learning to work around other dogs still can mm -hmm. be finding that environment to be very distracting. So that's great. Yep. So you so people could start here with a puppy kindergarten if yep. they have a puppy. Yep. And then they could go on to the everyday canine essentials. Yep. Or focused Fido. Some puppy kindergarten graduates actually have the skills to take focused Fido. Okay. Um, and they have hardworking owners who are right. training at home and they're right. preparing for that. Um, we say pre-agility, the dogs should be six months or older. Okay. So graduates of puppy kindergarten typically are not old enough to do pre-agility. Okay. Plus they would just benefit and from And pre-agility is the first yes. introductory to agility yes. class. Yes. Okay. So it sounds a little silly that we have pre-agility as our first agility class mm -hmm. and then we do beginner agility as our second okay. level agility classes. And all dogs start with pre-agility. Okay. Okay. Um, with very few exceptions. So before we sort of do some agility, what, um, I guess, what are the beginning obstacles? So in pre-agility, we spend the first couple of weeks doing a few of the agility obstacles in addition to doing some exercises that people who um, have never done agility mm -hmm. and don't have equipment at home can be practicing certain things right. at home as well. Right. So we do some trick training, we do a lot of practice of their basic obedience skills like sit, stay, down, and pay attention mm -hmm. to the owner. Um, we do some exercises in pre-agility for the first couple weeks of what are handling skills, and those are what the human, how they communicate with the dog to do agility. Oh, right, right. In addition to working on a few basic agility obstacles. Okay. And those would be um, our jumps, mm -hmm. tunnels, the uh, table mm -hmm. obstacle, yep. um, the A-frame, which is the large, um, wooden obstacle, mm -hmm. as well as doing um, some planks on the floor, um, poles on the floor, right. um, and some other introductory obstacles that then we build upon in the final three weeks of the class. So right. a pre-agility is a six-week class. We kind of vary um, the class with obstacle skills, handling skills, and then some basic obedience um, okay. skills. And then we string them all together right. and start to, to um, sequence those right. obstacles. So would some people, I would imagine that some people would do, would repeat pre-agility if they, if the skills weren't there yeah. or the dog didn't have the confidence to yes. go on? Yes. So pre-agility, occasionally there are certainly people and dogs who benefit from doing pre-agility twice. Mm -hmm. And those would specifically be dogs that um, are lacking confidence um, in certain obstacles that when, it, when they would move into the beginner agility class, mm -hmm. they would be um, really, re it would be very difficult to be moving forward. So mm -hmm. there are certainly dogs here and there that need to repeat pre-agility. Okay. Um, and then benefit that from that right, if they really right. want to move along. Um, some people really feel like their dog, um, their goals for agility um, don't really require them to be progressing either. They really <laughs> feel like their the dog is shy okay. or um, really uncertain about new things and they're using agility to help their dog build confidence oh. and um, 
and being around other dogs and stepping up on and over and through. So that would be a whole other reason to take agility. Yes. If you yep. have a shy dog that lacks some confidence yep. Yep. and competition is not in your blood system yep. at all, you yep. could still, you and mostly your dog could benefit from yep. agility. That's really good to and know. And it's really fun training. So I would say about half the people that come into our pre-agility class may have certain asp aspirations to actually do agility competitively. Mm -hmm. Sit. Lay down. He wants to do agility. I know. He has to be <laughs> me say agility. Um, and, and those dogs, you know, they have that particular goal in mind. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that they actually will compete in agility. Um, they may find that the owners um, aren't necessarily committed to the time that it takes. Mm -hmm. But there are the other half of the people who take agility with uh, pre-agility with their dog that they just want to have fun right. and they want their dog to learn something new and, and build confidence and so mm -hmm. on. So I, I think it's about a half-half mix. It takes approximately a year or longer for true beginner teams to be prepared for competition. Okay. And some people are unwilling or unable to really be committed for that right, long of a right, period of time right. to be ready for competition, even though they may, may wish that that might be something that they would do in the future. Right. So. Right. Okay, great. So let's do some agility. So tell us who this lovely dog is, and then let's see you do some. Okay, so this is Kobe, and Kobe is an Australian Shepherd. Mm -hmm. Sit. A herding breed? He's a herding dog, okay. yep. They're, um, even though their name says that they're an Australian Shepherd, they're actually designed um, and bred in the United States originally out in the West, and they are hardworking cattle um, herding dogs. It's kind yeah. of what they're bred to do. I know, and he, he knows I have food in my pocket. <laughs> he is almost 10 years old, and we've been um, doing agility wow. together for um, as um, pretty much um, as until he, when he was old enough to start competing, which is about a year and a half, he and I have been a, an agility team. Nice, very nice. And he likes agility. Hi. He makes a lot of noise when he does agility, so he is very enthusiastic. <laughs> and, um, and we'll be visiting, um, we'll be observing um, Kobe doing a few obstacles to start with. We also have some other dogs lined up to, to showcase. Great. Okay. All right, so let's go do some agility. Okay, all right. So this obstacle is, a, is called a tunnel, and the dog's job is to learn to go in one end and out the other. So Kobe's going to demonstrate um, the tunnel. Go, tunnel. Good boy. Ready? Tunnel. And again, he's a much more advanced agility dog. So in teaching um, the dogs to do the tunnel, we usually start with a nice short, short tunnel and have the dogs learn, sit, wait, to just come through the short tunnel. And then we work towards a much longer tunnel. Kobe, go, tunnel. Good boy. The next obstacle here is the teeter-totter. This is a much more advanced obstacle, and this teeter is set at a much higher height than we would start teaching the dogs to do the teeter-totter. Good boy. And the dogs go up one end, they bang it down, and, um, and then come off the other end. Kobe, right here. Ready? Teeter. Wait. So you can see why that would be a little bit more of a difficult obstacle to do. This next obstacle, this is the tire jump. The dogs go in one end and um, uh, through the tire hoop jump and come out the other end. Tire, good boy, come. Good boy, tire, good boy. Sit. The obstacle here is called the A-frame. The dogs are trained to go up and over the apex of the A-frame and down the other side of the ramp. Kobe, right here. As you notice, there is a yellow portion um, on both ends, and this yellow portion is called the contact zone. The dogs actually need to touch the contact zone with their paws um, on the descending side of the A-frame, sometimes the, top, uh, the ascending, so that's the beginning part. Ready? Wait. Wait. Good boy. And you see that Kobe actually stops at the end. Climb in. Touch. Wait to ensure that he is going to stop and touch the yellow part. Okay. Ready? Climb in. Wait. Okay. Oh. Are you okay? Come here. Ready? Climb in. Wait. Good boy. Okay. Good boy. Table. Table. Sit. The 
This is called the pause table. Dogs are trained to come on up and have a seat or lay down on the pause table. Most venues of agility use the pause table and have the judge they count to five. So the dog has to have a sit or down stay on the table for five seconds. Lie down. One and two and three and four. Okay. Good boy. Ready? Table. Table. Down. Down. Okay. Okay. Good boy. The obstacle here is called, uh, called the weave poles. Sit. The dogs uh, learn to slalom from pole to pole on the weave poles. Come here, Kobe. Right here. This is probably one of the hardest obstacles for mo most dogs to learn. Right here. Go, weave. <coughs> Kobe. Weave. <coughs> weave. <coughs> Good boy. Weave. Good boy. Good boy. He likes to weave. <laughs> Go. Weave. Good boy. And again, he's a pretty advanced agility dog. We've been playing agility for a long time. Good boy. And even though he doesn't necessarily need rewards, food rewards, to necessarily enjoy doing agility, he still appreciates those food rewards for working hard for me. Ready? Go. Weave. Good boy. Get it. Go get it. Good boy. Next we're going to meet Diane Gibbons. She is an instructor at the Monadnock Humane Society. Nice to see you, Diane. Good to see you, Denise. So tell us about Lexi. Lexi is um, a Shetland Sheepdog. She is an alum from MHS. She was a stray brought in um, a few years ago and I adopted her from the Humane Society. Oh, great. She's become just a wonderful little agility dog. That's awesome. Now, how old is Lexi? She's approximately five years old. Okay. And Shetland Sheepdog, just give the audience an idea of what, what, what does that mean? What does she do? What she She's a herding breed, okay. um, bred to herd sheep um, in the Shetland Islands, um, where it's, uh, the, I gather that the ocean is fairly loud, so they're bred to bark. Oh. A lot, so that the, <laughs> the farmers that. know where the they're, where their sheep dogs are. Um, so shelties can funny. be very barky. Oh, that's funny. That's um, good to know. Yeah, I learned something. Okay, so um, Lexi's five. Is she more on the advanced end of agility? Yes, um, she is. Um, she's actually competing in the middle levels, but her ability to do agility mm -hmm. is much more advanced. Great, great. Now, what sort of, I see you've got a bag of treats, I love that, and that's keeping her on the mat and keeping her quiet at yes. the moment. And then you use, like, um, we've seen some people just hand treats, but you have something different. So tell us what we're going to see. Yes, um, I have a rip and tug ball, which is a wonderful way of combining toy and treat. Mm -hmm. um, and it allows me to treat her at a distance by throwing it, Okay. which um, is part of how I train her distance skills. Oh, interesting. So this is Velcro. Yes. And, it, and do you just put, so there's like, this little space, so you just put several treats in there, or sometimes a couple one, treats. sometimes two. Great, and then you fold it back up and toss yes. it, and she's just learned to go in there and get it. Yes. Oh, very interesting. All right, great. Okay, so let's see her do some agility. Okay, come on, Lexi. Ready to do a little bit of agility? Next, we're going to meet Amy Abel and her two dogs, Basil and Spirit. Nice to see you again, Amy. Nice to see you. How are you doing? Very good. good. So you're an instructor here. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what you teach at the Monadnock Humane Society. Well, I teach a little bit of everything, but mostly what I'm teaching are the beginning pet dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and so I help people um, who have dogs that are new to them or young dogs mm -hmm. um, to become more proficient and get to a place where they are ready to start playing agility or playing rally. Um, right. Or um, also I help people who are interested in doing therapy dog work with their 
um, with their dogs. I help them to train their dogs okay. to a level. So it sounds like you teach the puppy kindergarten, everyday canine, all like focused, focused Fido, Fido sort of everything. Great. Yep, Reliable Rover, which is our um, third level. Mm -hmm. Um, pet dog class and the therapy dog Great. test. So tell us about your dogs. Okay, well the two dogs I have here today, this is Basil. He's a rat terrier. He's nine years old um, wow. and he is still an enthusiastic agility participant. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and this is Spirit. She's four years old. She's a collie mm -hmm. um, and she is currently competing in AKC agility at an open level. Mm -hmm. um, so it's open, medium, beginner, like what, it's in what? the middle. Okay. It's we're beyond beginner and we're not quite at the advanced level okay. with Good. her. Good so she's know. pretty, pretty proficient, getting okay. better all the time. Sit, Great. stay. And are either of your dogs therapy dogs? I know that's a big part of what you do here. Yes, both these dogs are registered therapy dogs. Great. Excellent. And so they, um, they have both been visiting in schools, libraries, nursing homes, and hospitals. Nice. All right. Now, you've got some food with you, too. So you do, you're, we're going to see you treat the dogs as they perform and go through obstacles. Yes, quite frequently. I use food to help the dogs understand that I'm very pleased with what they've done. Yeah. And that makes them want to do those behaviors um, more often. Great. All right. Well, let's go see them do some agility. All right. Come on, guys. meet Michelle Thevenin. She is the new executive director here at the Monadnock Humane Society and her dog Taylor. So nice to meet you Michelle. Yeah it's great to be here. Good. So um, tell us about Taylor and he's not with us because he's very shy around new people, new people. and okay. equipment. So um, I rescued Taylor about four years ago from a shelter mm -hmm. and he um, at that point in time was a puppy but had not been well socialized to the world so was afraid of a lot of things but not other dogs. Mm -hmm. So uh, realtor science, all of that, anything out in the world was right. very scary. Garbage so we've done cans. garbage cans, recycling <laughs> bins, balloons on parking meters. So we've right. done a lot of work in enabling him water. He was afraid of water, so wow. he swims now. So um, for me, the next step in helping him kind of gain more confidence was to, to start doing some agility work. Many mm -hmm. people had said that really is a great way to build mm -hmm. his confidence. And right. so it's very convenient, obvious, to, right. obviously, and so I started um, pre-agility work a couple of weeks ago. Great, yeah. great. So you've been doing it for two weeks. Yes. Wow. Yes. And what are we going to see him? What like what can he do in two weeks? Um, he has been doing jumps. We have been doing the A-frame. So wow, I'm and impressed. That's great. a little bit of tunnel work, but yeah. that takes that's that requires me to get into the tunnel. So you probably won't see that today. <laughs> <laughs> Darn! Yes, <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. Okay, so let's meet Taylor and All right. do some agility. All right, great.
so this has been a really fun day to see a variety of dogs mm -hmm. and an alumni. Uh, little Lexi is an alumni that yes. was adopted from the Manana Humane Society. And your dog is a rescue dog from right. some shelter. So it's just great to see that, you know, agility is for all dogs and really yes. all people. And right. What is it about the Humane Society? Like, you know, you guys offer so many classes and so mm -hmm. many other things that maybe other people don't know about, but just talk to us a little bit about the Humane Society mm -hmm. and its role in the community and, and how classes and agility sort of play into that. So part of the reason I was very excited to come in as the new executive director here was the holistic approach that Monadnock Humane Society mm -hmm. takes to building a humane community. Mm -hmm. That really is our entire mission. Um, and with the agility classes, the rally, the obedience, all of that that's taking place in this amazing training center really helps to build the broader Monadnock region as a humane community where our animals are well taken care of and right. beloved. Right. Um, we also have a daycare and boarding facility, um, which many people don't know about, and that's another way for people to really build good relationships with their animals mm -hmm. and um, and have some outlet when they need some extra mm -hmm. help caring for them, traveling or working. Um, and then obviously the adoption center is a, a, a huge, is the most visible part of what we do, mm -hmm. and people automatically think about that. But I think very holistically about all of the things that are going on here. Right, right. I love that word, holistic. It just brings, it just brings everything full circle. Right. And so whether you've adopted here or not, you can, anybody in the community can take classes at yes. the Humane Society. And what's the... Like I said, what's the best way for people to find out about classes, to register for classes? The best way is probably to go to our website, mm -hmm. which um, is www.monadpets.org. Okay. Um, so that has a, a listing of current classes right. and then upcoming classes that haven't yet started. Um, and then you can also do some exploration of our broader our broader work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So all your events and other things that are listed are, are listed there as well. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Thanks for watching Doggy Dilemmas. We'll see you next week. If you have a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Visit www.denisemazzola.com for more information. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer tested through the Association of Pet Dog Trainers. The association requires recertification every three years with a minimum of 30 hours of continuing education. She has been training dogs and working with families for over 20 years.